Hello everyone, I'm Maria Michelle A. Musura, and I'm here to discuss one of the topics under articulatory phonetics which is the place of articulation. Articulatory phonetics is the branch of phonetics which, according to Zoo in 2015, concerns with the sounds of speech produced by the organs of speech and how the vocal folds adjust the flow of air while it is passing through them for producing different sounds. As you can see in the picture, speech organs refer to the parts of the human body which are concerned in various ways with the production of speech and comprises the what we call vocal tract. All articulators in our vocal tract must work together to produce one speech sound. Just a note, we will just be focusing on the phonetics of spoken languages and more specifically the consonant sounds in general American English. After the air stream produced in the lungs passed through the larynx, it goes and passes through the mouth or and the nose. Consonants then are the sounds of speech which are produced or articulated via closure or obstruction in the vocal tract. That is according to Crystal in 2008. Vowels, on the other hand, is the opposite of consonants which refer to the sounds produced without friction or any stop, according to Yule in 2010. When linguists describe consonant sounds, they use three criteria. Voicing, for whether a sound is voiced or voiceless. Place of articulation, and manner of articulation. At this point, our discussion will center on the second one, the place of articulation. Place of articulation refers to where in the vocal tract the constriction of airflow takes place. The constriction happens between an active and moving articulator, typically one part of the tongue, and a passive articulator, typically one part of the roof of the mouth. The first classification of sound according to its place of articulation is called bilabial. Bilabial sounds are produced when both lips come together. English contains three bilabial consonants. P, as in purse. B, as in back. And M, as in mad. The next one is labiodental. Labiodental sounds are produced by curling the lower lip back and raising it to touch the upper teeth. Labiodental consonant sounds are f, as in family, and v, as in vine. Next is dental. Dental sounds are produced with a tongue in between the upper and lower teeth. Dental consonant sounds are the soft th sound with a symbol and we pronounce it as th as in thick and the hard th th as in them. The fourth one is alveolar. Alveolar sounds are produced with the tongue at or near the ridge, right behind the upper front teeth. The alveolar ridge is where your teeth meet your gums. The English alveolar sounds are as follows. N, as in no. T, as in tab. D, as in deep. S, as in soot. Z as in zip and l as in lock. We also have palatal sounds. These sounds are produced at the hard palate or the roof of the mouth. 
You create palatal sounds when you raise the tongue to this point and constrict airflow. The following are palatal sounds. Sh, as in shot. Sh, as in vision. Ch, as in chin. J, as in jam. And y, as in yes. So in the last one, although the symbol is like letter J, but its sound is y, as in yo-yo. Next is velar. Just behind the hard palate is the velum or soft palate. Velar sounds are produced when you raise the back of your tongue to the velum to block or restrict airflow. English has the following velar consonants. M as in ankle. K as in kite. G as in good and w as in weight. The last one is glottal. Glottal sounds are produced at the glottis or the space between the vocal folds. Examples are the glottal fricative as in height and the glottal stop with a symbol similar to a question mark. It is the variation of T sound that occurs only in a certain position in a word and is pronounced in a different way. We use this to make our pronunciation sound more like American. Here are the sample words. Certain, fountain, and button. Here is a table that categorizes consonant sounds according to their place of articulation. By labial, we have p, b, m. Labial dental, f, v. Dental, th, v. Alveolar. N, t, d, s, z, l, palatal, sh, sh, j, y, velar, n, k, g, w and glottal and a glottal stop so now what's the importance of learning these things about articulatory phonetics aside from getting familiar with the parts of the vocal tract concerned with the production of speech sounds knowledge on articulatory phonetics would help us improve our pronunciation skills as a matter of fact, in a research conducted by Murillo and her colleagues in 2018 entitled Articulatory Phonetics in the English Language Pronunciation Development, they have proven that students' awareness of articulatory phonetics through teachers' intervention enhances their English pronunciation development. The target of the study was to confirm that the lack of articulatory phonetic knowledge among students in Ecuador influences their low level of English pronunciation development, considering several factors, not to mention the influence of Spanish sounds in uttering English words. Sounds of speech production was covered theoretically. This information provided by the researchers, along with the whole process, helped the students increase their knowledge of the English language. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.